Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. I'm so excited for this one because we have a very special guest. Lyle is here with us, our copywriting queen. So we're very excited to get into everything today. Let us know where you're joining from the in the chat. It's one of my favorite things to see where everyone is coming from. But we have a lot to cover today, so I'm going to get right into it so we don't miss anything. So today we're going to be talking about creative copywriting tips for social media managers. Now, if this is one of your first webinars with us, we'll do some intros. So we are Heorka. So my name is Alyssa and I'm a community manager here at Heorka. So I work on our webinars, um, our Facebook group, which is linked at the top of the chat if you haven't joined it yet. Um, the newsletter, all that good stuff. And I'll pass it over to our special guest, Lyle. Hi, you guys. I'm so excited to be here. I'm usually in the chat with you. So this is my very first time presenting a webinar ever. Um, so I'm nervous, but I'm so excited. And I'm our resident writer. I started as a social media manager when I first started working, and now I'm a copywriter. And I'm really excited to share my weird and wonderful copywriting tips with you. Yay, we're so excited. And um, Ketsia actually put Lyle's LinkedIn in the chat. So if you want to connect with her, definitely do so. If you have any questions that maybe we didn't get to, feel free to send her a message or you can write it in our Facebook group as well and we can get back to you there. And then if you have any questions through the webinar, um, you can put them in the chat or we do have a Q&A tab as well. So you can put them there so that we don't miss any. So we do love to do giveaways in our webinars um, because it's so much fun. So we have two different giveaways. Uh, both giveaways, you'll be able to win points to our merch store. So um, the first way to win, you can head to our Instagram stories. And this question is currently on our Instagram stories. So head over there, answer the poll, and then we will be randomly selecting somebody who voted and you will win some points to our merch store. And Ketsia just put the link to our Instagram in the chat. So definitely check that out. And then the second way to win is actually for our Heroka customers in the chat. So shout out to you. Um, this is a question we asked a few weeks ago, but I love seeing everyone's answers. So I'm going to recycle it. Let us know in the chat how long you've been a Heroka customer. So let us know. And then we will be randomly selecting one of the customers at the end to win points as well. So be sure to stay tuned to the very end because you could be one of the lucky winners. Natalie, three years, Josh, six years, one year. Love it. Love to see all of this. Love it. Oh, we have someone trialing. Nice. Love that. Awesome. We'll keep sharing and we will be randomly selecting two winners at the very end. Um, so before I pass it over to Lyle, I do want to let everyone know and I'm sure if you're a customer, you know this already because it's such a cool feature. But speaking of copywriting, we do have AI captions within Heyorka. So I'm going to quickly show you how that works. So I have it open here. Um, so within the post modal in the caption area, you'll see an AI captions button. You can kind of see it behind here. So when you select it, you can write what your post is about. So you can be more descriptive than I am uh, in this example. Um, but you can put what your post is about, you can put some keywords in there. And then you can pick a tone, which is probably my favorite part. So let's pretend we want to be excited. And you, have, you can actually pick more than one tone as well. Um, and then we're going to generate some captions. So this is super helpful if you're having writer's block, because especially if you're an agency or a freelancer, you, you probably have a bunch of clients who may be all different industries. So it can be kind of hard to write for all those different industries. So if that is you, definitely use um, this feature. So you can add the caption to a post. And then the best part is you can then edit that to be a little more personal to your audience. You can add the, your brand voice and some other things we're gonna be going over today in Lyle's slides. So just a fun feature there to help you out if you're ever feeling writer's block, which is something I feel like we all feel all the time. Yes. 
Awesome. So I am going to now get the presentation back up and I am going to pass it to Lyle. Yay. Okay. Today, our agenda is super simple. I have 10 weird and wonderful tips for you. And then if we have time, we'll do a Q&A session. But I'm going to be honest, I have a lot to share with you. So like Alyssa said, if we don't get to your questions, you can send them to me on LinkedIn or um, post them in our Facebook group and we will get you some answers. So we'll just get right into it. My first tip for you is how to capture your brand voice. Even when your client's like, oh, I don't know what my brand voice sounds like. You're the expert. You get it. Um, I find, well, when I was a social media manager, I got this a lot from new clients who were new to social media. Um, but I think this tip is going to be helpful even if you're not working with a client that's new to social media. It's the most obvious, most simple tip ever. But I feel like because it's so obvious, a lot of people like to skip it. So my tip for you is to read reviews. This is the very first thing that I do if I start a new project for an existing client or I start working with a new client. Um, and the idea when you read reviews is you want to try to identify unique words and phrases that your customers use. Because when you're creating a brand voice, especially if you're trying to do that from scratch, you really wanna sound like how your customers speak, how your community speaks. You wanna use the same vocabulary as them. You wanna fit in with them in an authentic way, of course. Um, so that's the first thing I do. I read reviews and I'm looking for those unique little bits. Um, and then when I find those unique words and phrases, I add them to a word bank. And so it's so important to have a word bank going because then you can refer back to it every time you have a project for that client. Um, personally, I mean, this is not sponsored, but I obviously work at Heyorka. I like to use Heyorka notes for this, just because if you're a Heyorka customer, you already know you have like your brief information in there and like links to external resources and stuff. So to have your word bank there is like so helpful because it's all in one place. Then if you have like new team members, they can capture the brand voice perfectly too, because it's all right there. But that doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want to create your word bank. The idea is that you'll have a word bank. And then when you have writer's block, you can just sprinkle these words in where they make sense, where they fit grammatically. Um, and that'll help you create a post that sounds more like your customer, sounds more like your brand. And then obviously, I also know a lot of brands don't have reviews yet. They're super new, um, new to social media or just like new in general. So if you don't have any reviews yet or any testimonials, that's why it's so important to have an ICP um, because when you identify your ICP, and we covered this in a previous webinar, so I'm not gonna touch on it too much, um, but you can find our previous webinars on our website. Um, anyway, when you have an ICP, you should have a section in there about brands that your ICP likes to shop at. So then you just go over to those brands and read their reviews because the language, the vocabulary that your ICP uses is going to be pretty similar no matter where they're posting. Um, so yeah, that's my tip for you is to uh, read reviews to create a brand voice. And here's just like a silly little example of how I might do that. So here's a bunch of reviews for uh, a random candle. They're real reviews. Um, and I'm not going to read all of them, but I'll give you one of them. This person says, this fragrance is so warm and sultry. It is perfect for any space, but I currently have this one burning in my bedroom. It, sells, it smells so pretty and expensive. So I would look at all these reviews and then I would say, ooh, what are the little words and phrases that stand out to me? So some of them are luxurious olfactory experience. It's very like elevated and luxurious. Um, stylish, opulent, fall tablescape, I thought was really unique. So that's something I might use in my copy. Um, sweater weather, alluring, transports, enchanting, sensory. So you get the idea. So I would say that this brand feels very elevated, luxurious. And these are the words that I would put into my word bank. I could pull them verbatim and use them in my copy, or I could just read them and use them as inspiration. Um, so yeah. Oh, I love this. I was just going to say, I love this because I, I feel like, and maybe this is like a popular thing to do, but I feel like I did not know this until you showed us this. Like, this is such a good way to see what some of those words are that you can be using in your copy. Like, I had no idea. 
Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Yes. Um, I find like sometimes I even try and skip this piece, but it it's the foundation of the writing project. You have to read the reviews first. And also this works like if you have a B2B brand, it's going to sound different. It's not going to sound as luxurious or elevated as this example, but you're still going to be able to pick those words out. Um, okay, actually, before let me go back. Before I jump into the next tip, if you are interested in brand voice, because this is the only place really that will cover it in this webinar, but we do have a new resource uh, written by our awesome writer, Alexander. He's amazing. Um, and that's on how to create brand voice and also how to create a brand voice chart, which pairs really well with the word bank. So if you're interested, you can check that out and we can put the link in the chat. Okay. My next tip, is there a correct way to format emojis and hashtags? This was one of the biggest questions that I had when I first started as a social media manager. And I found it so weird because I was like, I use emojis all the time when I'm texting my friends, my family or whatever. Um, but using them in like a professional way, I found myself really confused. So I thought I would cover it really quickly here. This is sort of going to be a recap for those that were in our accessibility webinar. Um, but it, it's always nice to have a refresher, I think. So for hashtags, I would recommend using Pascal case, or you might know it as title case, where the first letter of each word is capitalized. And this helps accessibility for everyone. It just makes the hashtag easier to read. And also for those that are using screen readers, it helps the screen reader read it. Um, so I would avoid using sentence casing for hashtags. Also, the um, Pascal case can be really helpful for just making sure that everyone interprets your hashtag the same way. It's good for branding. I know that there's been a couple hashtags that have gone viral for saying things that they're not supposed to say because they're in sentence casing. Like a couple of years ago, the for Susan Boyle's album release, her hashtag was sentence casing and it was like Susan album party. And I'm not going to say what the alternative version said, but if you're, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can type it in yourself. Um, so anyway, Pascal case for hashtags. Um, is just best practice. I remember seeing that Susan Boyle one. I feel like that's an example everyone uses, which is funny. Yes, yeah, it's like the go-to. Um, but I, I just saw it like recently, so I had forgotten about it for a while. Um, okay, emojis. If you have existing brand guidelines for emojis, don't listen to me, just use your brand guidelines, of course. But if you're curious about like best practices, maybe for using emojis, here's what I would recommend. Um, first, I would put emojis on the outside of your sentence, like outside the punctuation. Um, and this just, it's a stylistic thing. It just makes your sentence easier to read versus having like an emoji in the middle of your sentence. And it, I think I'm not an ac accessibility like expert by any means, but I do think that it helps um, readability for screen readers because it doesn't like break up the sentence. So I'd recommend putting your emoji on the outside. I would also recommend avoiding uh, avoid replacing words with emojis because everyone interprets emojis differently, even if they're as simple as like a pink heart. If you say something like I pink heart potatoes, it's such a silly example. But if you say that personally, I interpret that as I pink heart potatoes, not I love potatoes. Um, so I would recommend spelling out L-O-V-E instead of using the heart. Um, and then you can use the emoji, but just put it on the outside. Um, also, some people... I don't know why some people use Androids and emojis sometimes show up as those little squares. So that obviously does not provide a good experience for your user. They're kind of left confused. Um, so that's another reason why you don't want to replace words with emojis. And then avoid long strings of emojis. Um, like I heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji, potatoes, because the screen reader will read it out as heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji. So again, not the best experience. Um, I think we have a question here from Grace. Um, does it ever make sense to use emojis to call attention to a headline in a post? I do that um, as long as, like I said, like as long as they're not emojis that are replacing words, but like sometimes I'll use like a finger point or like a star. Like I think that is fair game. Perfect. Also, we have some Android users who are feeling attacked. I and still have you. I do. We have Android users on the Heorka team. We're yeah. all friends. Um, but her, I used to be an Android user. I'm not going to lie. But now I am team iPhone. The FaceTime, like. I know. Amazing. It's great. 
Um, okay, bullet points. I tend to get a lot of questions about bullet points. Like, am I formatting them correctly? And like, what can I do with my bullet points? So I thought I would cover it, but I wanna preface this by saying like, there are so many ways to write bullet points. So if you are not vibing with these tips, they're not for you, don't worry. Like you can do your bullet points however you wanna do your bullet points. But here's some tips that I find helpful. Um, just three things. The first one is verbs. Verbs are your best friend. If you start every um, individual point in your bullet point sequence with a verb, your reader is going to be so happy because they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. They're going to be more actionable, those bullet points, um, more compelling, more clear, and you're going to give your reader um, some clear direction. I would also recommend reading each individual bullet point with your bullet point lead in statement to make sure they all flow. Um, and then if you wanna get really into the weeds and nerdy about it, if you have bullet points, individual bullet points that tend to be longer and they flow onto other lines, like maybe they take up two lines instead of one, I would put those at the end of your bullet point sequence so that it doesn't break up your formatting. So I'll show a quick example. This is made up. Um, and I think I made this up. Oh yeah, like if you're a social media agency and maybe you have a guide for wedding planners. So on the left there, it says, download the guide to discover how to get your name out there as a go-to wedding planner in the industry, how the top planners create good content, our favorite ways to get new clients. These aren't necessarily wrong, but I think that they can be better if you start each one with a verb, if you move that long point down, and if you read each individual point with the lead-in statement. So if I was gonna read each point with the lead-in, I'll just read one, the middle one. It would sound like, download the guide to discover how to, how the top planners create good content. Grammatically, that does just doesn't make sense. It's a little bit clunky. Um, so I would, by implementing my tips, the bullet points would sound like this. Download the guide to discover how to, build a standout wedding planning brand, create fresh content that sparks engagement, attract perfect fit clients without any icky sales tactics. So these are a little bit punchier because you're saying build, create, attract, you're starting with those verbs and each one completes the lead in statement. So download the guide to discover how to create fresh content that sparks engagement. Download the guide to discover how to attract perfect fit clients without any icky sales tactics. So they all, each one, if you take away the, way, the rest, make a complete sentence with the lead in statement. Hopefully that makes sense. And then also I have that longer one at the very bottom. So it doesn't mess up your formatting stylistically. It just looks cleaner. It looks a little bit more professional. Um, so these tips work best if you're writing bullet points that have to do with um, benefits or things that are like uh, focused on your consumer or your community. If you have bullet points that are like a list of features, for example, which you are absolutely allowed to do, you're allowed to write a bullet point list of features, these tips maybe wouldn't apply because you maybe wouldn't start them all with a verb. Um, but these are still things that you can keep sort of in your toolkit if you happen to write bullet points about benefits. We have a few comments in the chat. Um, we mm -hmm. have some people loving all the memes you've put in, so oh, yeah. that's great. Um, we have one question is, what's an example of the first point? I think on the first bullet point slide, Maybe the one before that one. Yeah. This one. Oh, so this was just supposed to be, it's just supposed to be a cute thing. Like use verbs. So I wrote talk verby to me. <laughs> Sorry. I love it. It's just, this, I'm, it's just me being silly. Um, but the first point, yeah, it just means use verbs um, as a, the first word of each individual point. Sorry about that. And then there's one more question, and this is actually back to the emojis, but oh. is it suitable to use emojis for serious brands on LinkedIn? What are your thoughts? Personally, I think yes. I probably wouldn't be using some of the, I don't know, more out there emojis, um, but I would recommend creating like a brand guideline if you don't already have them, if you don't already have like editorial or style guidelines. Um, we have some at Hiorca and for example, like we have emojis that we prefer and emojis that we do not use. For example, we don't use the peach emoji, um, or the water gun emoji. So I would recommend, yeah, creating that resource and then sort of referring back to it. Nice. Um, and then the last one was when it comes to bullet points, would you want to have them alphabetically? 
or does that not matter? Um, I don't think that matters, but if you have the option to have the most impactful, powerful, compelling bullet point as the very first one in your list, I would do that. I think that's more important than alphabetical. Perfect. And I think that's all for the questions. Cool. Okay. So my next tip is what to do if your client says, I don't want my brand to sound negative. Um, I do remember getting this comment a couple times from clients who were just very like hyper aware of sounding too negative. They wanted like a positive vibe around their brand, which I totally understand. But obviously as marketers, we need to talk about pain points. We need to address pain points. So how do you do that in a way that um, sparks motivation and inspiration and feels just more bright and <laughs> happy? Um, I would use what's called uh, positive future pacing. So basically what you want to do is instead of emphasizing how terrible your ICP's current pain points make their life, you want to look at the bright side, look into the future and paint them a picture of how great things can be once those pain points are resolved. And this is like a tried and true, like has been around for forever, uh, copywriting uh, tactic or technique. So you can use this even if you're not experiencing the situation where your client wants to be uh, more positive. Uh, so this is fair game for everyone to use. So here are some examples of what that might look like. Um, and these are all made up. So the first one is for like a lawn care service. Uh, so your post might say, summer is coming, tired of having the patchiest lawn on the block every year. That is totally fine to say. It addresses the pain point and it might be really compelling for your ICP. But if you want to use positive future pacing to sound more positive, um, the same passage would sound like summer is coming, want to have the most lush lawn on the block this year. So it's a little bit more uh, motivational or inspiring. Here is another example. Real estate agents, let's face it, relying solely on client referrals is frustrating and unsustainable. With positive future pacing, that turns into something like this. Real estate agents, picture this. Three weeks from now, you've filled your client roster with motivated sellers, all without relying on inconsistent referrals. So you're still addressing the problem of having inconsistent referrals, but you're making the future look a little bit brighter. And you're also giving them a concrete timeline three weeks from now. So it's a little bit more compelling, maybe, and positive than the previous example. But again, you can it's fair game to use the previous example, too. And finally, growing a small business on social media is not as easy as it seems. Download our free guide to find your way. Again, you can use this, but with positive future pacing, it would sound like something like this. Growing a small business on social media can feel so simple when you have the right tools. Download our free guide to find your way. So it just feels a little bit more positive, but it still communicates the same message. So that's positive future facing. And next, this is one of my favorite ones. What the whale noise is active and passive voice. I think this is something that pretty much everyone <laughs> struggles with. We learn it in school, but sometimes it just doesn't seem to click. Myself included, took a while for me to understand what the difference is between active and passive voice. And as marketers, we're always told, we always hear you want to use the active voice. So how do we do that? Let's get into it. But this actually, is the one I always struggle with. It's like really difficult. Yes. And it's like when you've been teaching us about it, it's like it sounds kind of easy, but then when you're actually writing it, it's hard. Yeah, this is just this is the difficult one, in my opinion. I think so, too. But I have a silly little trick that will help you identify passive voice. Uh, so hopefully it's helpful for people. But first, let's do a little quiz. It's a pop quiz, but there's only one question. So my question for you is, how would you describe this sentence? And the sentence is the social media strategy was executed perfectly. Is it a active voice, B passive voice or C? pink. And I'll give you like, I don't know how long. 10 seconds. <laughs> we got a lot of answers here. Do we? Okay. We got so, a lot of some B's, C's, some A's. It's, it's everywhere. It's okay, good. Um, okay. So the answer is B, this is passive voice. And I'll explain how to find that and how to change it to active 
shortly. But also, if you guess C, you also get a point because the sentence is in pink font. So you were also right. Um, okay, so this is similar to what maybe you would have learned in school. Um, I just tried to make it super short. So active voice happens when the subject of the sentence is the one performing the action. So an example would be, Alyssa hosted a great webinar. Alyssa, the subject of the sentence, the protagonist of the sentence, she is the one doing the action. She hosted a great webinar. This sounds natural. This is how most of the time we communicate to each other. And you'll notice when we get into the passive example that the active sentence is typically shorter. Um, so it's more concise and punchy. Um, and passive voice, this happens when the subject of the sentence is receiving the action. So the same sentence in passive voice would sound like, a great webinar was hosted by Alyssa. Kind of sounds clunky. The great webinar is receiving the action of being hosted by Alyssa. So it doesn't really feel as natural as the active voice, Alyssa hosted a great webinar. So if that doesn't resonate with you, you're not following, don't worry. Here's my silly little trick to help you understand if your sentence is passive. And it's simply, think of your favorite animal. I'll give you a second. And add the phrase, by your favorite animal, to the end of the sentence. And if the sentence makes sense grammatically, it can feel ridiculous, but if it makes sense grammatically, it's passive. So here are some examples. The account was created by dolphins. That makes sense grammatically, so it's passive. The report will be reviewed by clownfish. It makes sense grammatically, so it's passive. And finally, the problem is thought to be solved by manatees. That makes sense grammatically, which means it's passive. So now that you know how to identify a, a sentence in passive voice, to switch the sentence to active voice is actually pretty easy and I'll take you through some examples. Okay, three examples. The first one, the event was held at our venue. So if you add your favorite animal, the event was held at our venue by dolphins. Ah, it makes sense grammatically, which means it's passive. So what you have to do is identify who performed the action in real life, it wasn't dolphins, let's say it was clients. The event was held at our venue by clients. All you do is take clients and flip it to the beginning of the sentence. So clients held the event at our venue. There you have the active voice. So we can do another one. The award for customer satisfaction was received by our company. You already know this is passive because if you replace by our company with by orcas, it makes sense. So the award for customer satisfaction was received by orcas. So it's passive. So you would take by our company, the thing that performed the action and whoop, flip it to the beginning of the sentence. So the active voice is our company received the award for customer satisfaction. And one more example, the training session for employees was conducted earlier this week by manatees. You know this is, pa is passive because it passes the favorite animal test. So identify who actually in real life performed the action. Let's say it was us. The training session for employees was conducted earlier this week by us. Take us, flip it to the beginning of the sentence. It becomes we. We conducted the training session for employees earlier this week that's active. So hopefully this is helpful to help you identify passive voice and change it to active. But if it's not, you can also use chat GPT or whatever AI you is your favorite and plug in your passage and say, please identify passive voice, please change passive voice to active voice and it works. So that's another little trick that you can use. Um, and I have used it myself, so there's no shame in using AI to do that. Um, I like the favorite animal trick because I think it's just good for the brain to be able to recognize and change it. This was so helpful. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people in the chat who are saying the same thing. So we love oh, this. Yay. Okay. And um, a question, will a recording of this webinar be sent out after today? Yes. So it usually takes a little bit to process. So it usually will be sent out um, tomorrow. So you'll get that tomorrow. And then it's also on YouTube on Monday. Cool. Okay. 
Um, my next tip is how can I make my copy sound punchier? I feel like we get this as marketers quite a bit. Like you want to write punchy copy, snappy copy. I don't have another word to describe it. <laughs> so punchy it is. Um, I have two tips for you and they're both super easy. I was going to, um, my picture for this slide was going to be like a, a punch, like pow. And then I was like, no violence. So we're doing a nice, a cute, nice little bowl of punch. Um, so my two tips, one is to delete unnecessary words. I, we've probably all heard this, that you don't have to use the word just, J-U-S-T. But another one that you can remove is that, T-H-A-T. So I'll show you examples in a second. The other one is I-N-G endings, gerunds. They're your acquaintances. You are 100% allowed to use them. They're not off limits by any means, but they're not your besties. If you remove them when you can, your copy will sound punchier. So let's go through some examples. Boop. Okay, so removing that, let's say you have this sentence. We saw that there was a need to repurpose the content that you created. This is a fine sentence. You're allowed to use this, but you might notice that it's kind of like, I don't have a word for this. We saw that there was an, it's clunky, it's long, it's longer than it needs to be. So the rule for removing that is so easy. It's just, if you can understand your sentence without the word that, T-H-A-T, you can whoop, remove that, you don't need it. Of course, there are gonna be sentences where you do need to use the word that, and so you'll keep it in. But if you can understand your sentence without it, take it out. So the same sentence becomes, we saw there was a need to repurpose the content you created. It's shorter, snappier, punchier. Uh, so that would be a better choice. And then the next one is avoiding those ing endings. I see this sort of sentence a lot. And again, it's okay to use a sentence like this. There's just perhaps a better option. So I see this one a lot. Are you wanting to start growing your small business on social media? That, if you remove the ing endings, becomes want to grow your small business on social media? It's just a lot punchier and snappier. And you might also notice I removed the are you because you don't really need it. You can just start with want. Um, okay, so to summarize, you don't need that. You don't need just. Um, and you don't necessarily always need an ing ending. You, in most cases, probably can take it out. Okay, now we're gonna be talking about benefits. That's another one as social media marketers, we hear all the time, you wanna talk about benefits, not features. But if you're stuck, you kind of have writer's block, how the heck do you talk about benefits and not features? Here are some tips for you. They're really simple. The first one is use you language, Y-O-U language. Um, so these are all made up examples again. You could have a sentence that says this, small business owners use our comprehensive legal services to protect their assets. That could be 100% true. But even if I'm reading this as a small business owner, I don't necessarily know that you really are talking directly to me unless you use that word you or your. Um, so you can rewrite the same sentence by popping you or your in there as many times as you can. So it might become this, protect your assets so you can grow your small business with confidence. Now, as a reader, as a small business owner, I know you're talking directly to me and you'll notice that the second version of the sentence is more consumer focused and less brand focused. Um, okay, so the next one is start with a verb. I know I've been going on and on about starting with a verb, um, but it's so important. Uh, it can be so effective. It's just like the best, okay, we love verbs. Um, and I know that when you first start, when you first start writing sentences that start with verbs, it can kind of feel like uh, I'm being like too pushy or like too salesy. It kind of sounds weird, but I would urge you to stick with it because it really and truly is that effective. Um, and also you'll notice as you continue doing this technique or tactic um, that there are so many verbs you can choose that have a very pleasant tone. You don't have to be saying click here, buy now get whatever you can choose verbs that fit your brand voice and your tone and uh yeah communicate authentically with your uh with your icp um so where was i okay start with the verb here's a sentence uh, about a made-up charity we depend on donations from clerks and community members like you that could be totally true but you'll notice that it's very much focused on the charity or the brand so if you start with a verb your sentence might sound like this support 
support your cluggers, donate to our food rescue program to make an impact. You're communicating with your ICP exactly what you want them to do and exactly what the outcome of doing that will be. And that's all because you embrace verbs, our favorite. <laughs> and then the final tip for emphasizing benefits over features. This is another one of those things that's just tried and true, like copywriters everywhere love this trick. Um, and it's to ask yourself, so what? So let's say you have a sentence that says, our professional development courses are taught by industry experts. You say, so what? Well, the answer to so what is, well, you'll learn from the best in the industry to accelerate your career. So just answering that question will help you sort of come to what the, the benefit really is. So again, to emphasize benefits, use you, start with a verb and ask yourself, so what? I have to tell you a comment we just had. Oh, okay. at, I think this is the best Hey Orca webinar I've attended. Oh my God, you're going to make me cry. Thank you. You guys don't even know how nervous I was. I was like, Alyssa, I can't do it. But now it feels fun. And I know the chat is so nice. Everyone's so nice. So thanks. That makes me feel really good. Um, okay, hooks. I actually don't have a ton to say about hooks because instead I made you a little um, template that you can screenshot if you want, if you think it'll be helpful for you. So, and this is just the, I mean, for any Longhorn fans, that's for you. Um, okay. So you can screenshot this if you want. Um, let me get the cursor out of the way. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so here are some hooks that you can use if you're just like, you have writer's block or you're not sure. Um, where to even start, uh, here are some things that you can pull from. You will notice these hooks require you to have a really good understanding about what your ICP really is. So a lot of them require that you plug in your ICP's core desire, their pain points, um, topics that they like, uh, scenarios that they might be, involved in and sales objections. So at the foundation of a good hook really is understanding your ICP. Like you got to have that ICP on lock. And then um, if you are interested, no pressure, but if you're interested, you can um, check out more hooks on our blog. We have a blog post about hooks specifically for TikTok. So they're verbal and visual. So that could be another source of inspiration for you. But again, no pressure. Um, okay, so that's hooks. And then this, this is just me being weird. AI is sometimes kind of sort of actually really helpful. Uh, when AI first came to the scene, I was nervous. I was so nervous. Um, but actually it's proved to be like a really good resource. And if you're a Herica customer, you already know that because you're probably using the AI captions. I like, um, this is a tangent, but AI um, alt text, when I upload blogs, I do the, I take the image and put it in Hierarcha to steal that alt text. It's perfect, love. Um, anyway, I wanna share with you some uh, AI prompts that I use. I was gonna say I use these weekly, but realistically, I use these multiple times a day. Um, so uh, they're really helpful for me. So I just wanted to share them with you in case they're helpful for you also. Um, so the first one is please brainstorm a list of synonyms for whatever word you're thinking of. And I used to be obsessed with thesaurus.com and dictionary.com to find synonyms. But I, I really think that um, ChatGPT comes up with way better synonyms and more of them. So if you are someone that is uh, also obsessed with the, the thesaurus, I uh, would highly recommend using this AI prompt. And then the other one is uh, please brainstorm a list of words and phrases that have a whatever tone you're looking for. This can be helpful for expanding your um, word bank that I was talking about earlier. And you can even just like copy and paste your word bank in there to give it sort of an idea of what you want and it'll create a list of more words for you. So I find that that one can be really helpful. And we already covered this, but you can ask AI to rewrite your post using the active voice and that can be very helpful. Um, please generate a list of puns related to whatever topic. Um, obviously we try and have like a witty, punny tone, playful tone at Heorca. So this one comes in handy. I actually find that AI doesn't come up with the best puns in the whole wide world, but, um, sometimes 
seeing really bad puns can get the creative juices flowing and inspire better ones. So I still think that it is a helpful prompt. And then finally, please rewrite this passage to match a grade eight re reading level. Um, your brain guidelines, if you have them, might say differently, but like generally speaking, you wanna keep your copy at a grade eight reading level or lower, just so that it's accessible to everyone and it's as clear and concise as possible. Um, so I find that one helpful. And then if you are looking for more AI prompts, Alyssa has some more on the blog. Um, so you can check those out there. There's like a big long list. They're not all like copywriting specific necessarily, but they are like social media specific. Um, okay. The next one is just oh, some resources that I find helpful. Hopefully they'll be helpful for you too. Um, okay, about the grade eight reading level, I think the Hemingway app, if you don't use it, it's free. I don't know why it's called an app. I just use it like on desktop in my browser. Um, it works similar to uh, Grammarly, but it will show you on the side the like reading level, the grade level that your copy uh, matches. So that one's really helpful. If you feel like you're writing something and it's just sounding a little bit too like technical or complex, that's a good resource. If you have a word and the other words, that the word that you really want is on the tip of your tongue and you just like can't get it, relatedwords.io is helpful because you just plug in your word and it'll create a whole word bank of words for you that you can pull from. Oh, and I should say too, like we are not associated with any of these resources. These are just, I genuinely feel like they're helpful. So I, <laughs> I hope that they're helpful for you too. And then number three, is another one if you if your copy requires a witty tone um you can spark inspiration with idioms which are like phrases like it's it's raining cats and dogs um that's idioms.thefreedictionary.com and then um mark marketing examples.com if you have like a a folder of swipe files going this is a good one to pull from it's this guy harry dry um, who created marketingexamples.com. I do not know him. I just think that he creates good resources. And I believe he has a newsletter too. And then the last one, this is a shameless plug, um, is we created a social media engagement questions resource in collaboration with our stands and community. And it's just a whole bunch of questions to ask your community. So if you're ever stuck and you're like, oh, I want engagement, but like, I don't know what to ask. This one is a go-to. And then... Finally, I just wanted to leave you with this. Um, this is from marketingexamples.com, the uh, Harry Dry person that I was talking about earlier. And I thought it was interesting. And I just wanted to leave you on this note that like, I know we covered a lot of stuff and some of it's in the weeds and like really nitpicky, but honestly, when it comes down to it, like it's just about connecting with your community. Like your copy, like if you have a typo, doesn't matter, like it's fine. As long as you're creating those connections with your community and one of the best ways to do that is ask them questions, get to know them, like interact with them. So when in doubt, and even when you're not in doubt, ask questions. So I found this interesting. 70% of Calvin Klein's tweets are questions and 100% of Ralph Lauren's are statements. And obviously they're both huge brands and they get great views and reach and you know everything, except for Calvin Klein's replies. In this example, they have 8,260 and Ralph Lauren has three. So if you really needed like, uh, I don't know, something to tell you that questions are it, this might be it. And I think that's it for me. I had AI create this, took me about 45 minutes, um, but I'm really happy with it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank we'll just you. sit here and look at it. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> the webinar is just sitting, staring at it. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Lyle. This was incredibly helpful. And everyone in the chat has just learned so much. Everyone's hyping you up. We definitely need to do this again. Maybe we'll do um, a refresher, uh, maybe sometime in the summer or something like that. Yeah. We'll have a copywriting refresher because this was so good and filled with so many tips. So thank you so much. And I know we have a minute left, so I'll quickly tell us uh, the winners from our giveaway. So our Heroka customer winner was Liz Jacobus. So congratulations, Liz. And then the Instagram winner is Courtney Pitts. So I will be contacting both of you 
after this webinar, we'll be getting you some merch points. And I do want to let you all know we have another webinar next week. And we will be going over how you can easily onboard a new client. We have a special guest for that one as well. So if you're an agency or a freelancer, you'll love next week's webinar. But thank you everyone so much for coming. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye, everyone.